Hi, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com, and I'm speaking with Jerry. And Jerry owns a business called Tech Central, and and it's a it's a fix it shop that repairs different tools. And also, he's a guy that can sharpen bush hog blades, or brush hog blades, or brush cutter blades, whatever you want to call them. And I brought a set of blades in today to show him, uh, and it's fairly typical, I think, of what a lot of people in this area. Or, or really any area with a lot of rocks will see. I don't know whether you can see the edge on that. It's, it's not straight. It's not sharp. And to get his opinion, uh, when I was a kid growing up on a farm, we never did sharpen our own blades. We always took it someplace, and so I'm not an expert on blade sharpening. But Jerry, I'm going to let you talk now. Okay. You've seen these blades right here. This is an eight-foot brush hog, so it's got, it's got two sets of blades, and that's why there's four blades. And they're, and they're typical of a used brush hog that's been through a few rocks and things. Mm -hmm. What's a guy need to do if his blades look like that? Gas up and keep going. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 when, you, when you called me the other day and you said, what do you do to sharpen brush hog blades? I remember your answer. I thought, why would you do that? Its sole purpose is, is, is more pulverizing than cutting. Yep. Um, the reason they have an edge is if you're really looking for a really clean finished cut, but a blunt end will will still cut your grass. It'll still cut your 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 shrubs. It'll still cut your trees. The damage you get on a brush hog is 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 when you hit rocks. By taking that edge off, you're literally just opening yourself up to a larger pieces of deflection and and dents and bends and me personally, I'm a cheapskate when it comes to brush hog blades. I've been running the same set for 20 years. My blades, they're rounded over. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I could take a grinder to it and, and, and finish them off. Well, now you've heat treated the metal. Is that good? Well, you got an edge, but now the metal's harder and it's going to be more brittle and it's going to crack. I've had guys take a little ball peen hammer and straighten them out. Well, these usually aren't the highest grade of material. The, the blades are usually made of pretty poor steel or even cast iron. And when you bend that back out after you get a ding from a rock, it's going to break right off right there and you're going to have yourself a chunk take out. You know, there's nothing wrong with the blades I see here unless you're looking to get a finished cut from a brush hog, which in my opinion... That's not what the machine's made for. When I get in with a brush hog, I want to I want to rip out. I mean, heck, you can take a tree down two mm -hmm. two inches around. Some guys may not agree with me, but the, the edge is insignificant to what the tool is designed to do. So, your best advice for somebody that owned a cutter and and is getting some wear on it? Wh when do I sharpen my blades? Do I ever sharpen my blades? They look good to me. One side is is more worn than the other, but. Uh, looked like somebody had changed just one set. It's not uncommon to change one set. Somebody might break one blade and then buy a pair and then run the, you want to run even on each each blade so you don't ruin the bearing and the spindle. My first brush hog, the, the damage was done to the skirt. I hit so darn many rocks that that skirt came right off and we <laughs> haven't re-welded. Still haven't sharpened the blades. You, you, had it, you, you had it up to fix the sides and you never I ran. tore the skirt off and I'm still running the same blades. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the bottom line of this and, and, and what I think your takeaway should be is there's a couple of blades that look like they've been sharpened more. If you're if you're gonna sharpen your blades, make sure you sharpen equal on both sides. If you get one side sharpened more than another, it, you get wobbled and you can well, get damaged. Let me let me say it like this. If you've got a big ding, uh, ping pong ball size ding or marble size ding in it. I mean, you could take a grinder on that and then grind it down and you're heat treating that blade. And brittle metal does what? It breaks. Uh, I've seen people take little hammers and pound them back. You know, that would work if you're cutting nothing but grass. But as soon as you hit something, that area of deflection, once it's bent up and then you push it back with a hammer, it's going to break completely gone and you're going to have yourself look like, you know, a little cookie bite, you know? <laughs> if you do have a, a chunk out of it and you want to sharpen it, what's the best way with, with say, an L-head grinder 
put it on jack stands, get up under there and sharpen it. What we want to keep the angle just about where it's where it's at. How are you going to do that? What you can do on something like that is just take a file, like a, a coarse file, and run it on the bottom. See, the bottom is sharp, so it sharpens just as well too. You get that nice and clean with a file. I mean, sure, you're going to be doing it for a while, but as far as the top, you're going to feel that edge. It's still going to give you a sharp edge. If I take this and I start going down like this, I'm going to be reducing the width of the blade. You're going to reduce the width of the blade every time you hit a rock. But if you want to get a nice edge, do the back sides. Do the back side, okay. And and then you don't have to worry about it. Just just take the crust off. Just take take the uh, lips off. Now, if you want to run it with a grinder, that that's your call. You could probably do a flapper disc, which would be less heat, but it would take longer. You could run it with a, a real aggressive grinding wheel, which would be less heat, but you'd be removing more material. But uh, so now lawnmower blades, yeah, I'll, I'll get them razor sharp. I'll get that angle just like that. I want a nice clean yard. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the backyard, I just want to take it down. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you mentioned that I want to talk about is time. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I'm paying somebody to sharpen these, at what point could I have bought a new set of blades? And these, these four blades and new bolts cost about $225 for this machine. Okay. And if, if I only had a six foot machine, I'd have two blades, two sets of bolts, and it cost about a half that. So at what point am I, would I have been better off just to take them all off and put on new ones? Depends on how good the fisher bite. <laughs> <laughs> I'd spend all about 15 minutes, 10 minutes a blade. 15 minutes aside, I mean, if it got to the point where I was under a time crunch, yeah, I might run a hand grinder, but uh, it would just be to brighten it, and and yeah, if your blade has got some big chunks taken off of it, you can still put an edge on it and just pretend that chunk isn't there. It's when you try to really put a sharp edge on it, what you're doing is you're depleting the cutting surface of your blade, and the second as you hit a rock, you're you're moving that width of the blade that far back, you're taking that chunk that much further back, you're reducing the life of the blade, and if you spend three hours grinding on it, I guarantee you, you're going to put a heat treat on it, you're going to turn that blade blue, and the first good rock you hit, you're going to lose the whole blade. This set's just fine. I'd put them back on and get her done. All right, Jerry, appreciate you taking time to talk to me today, and, and we're going to plug Jerry's business. If you have tools that need repaired and you live in southern Missouri, this is a guy you can trust and a guy you can talk to. Tell us about where you're at and what you do. Okay, Tech Central. We are a full service repair shop. We do electric, air, and gas motors, and we also sell expendable tooling for concrete, granite, and masonry, and then we do sharpening of blades chainsaw blades, brush hog blades, lawnmower blades. They're on Highway 14 right in, in the middle of Nixon, Missouri in southwest Missouri and your phone number is? 417-724-9988. I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this video with other tractor enthusiasts. And if you have questions or comments, put them down below. We'll try to get back with you. Thanks for watching.